Pharmaceutical manufacturers Pfizer and BioNTech have announced a breakthrough in their COVID-19 vaccine research. Now, the company revealed the vaccine it was working on has demonstrated a 90% effectiveness rating against the coronavirus. Now, the study confirmed the final success rate could vary, but the news was still greeted by a lot of optimism as the race, of course, for an effective and safe vaccine uh, by year end continues. Now, Pfizer executives expect to immunize between 15 and 20 million people by the end of 2020. The long term safety and efficacy of the vaccine is yet to be determined, though, and so far little is known about how long the vaccine's protection might last. But let's uh, unpack it all. Dr. Esak Mehta is the national principal investigator of the Pfizer vaccine clinical trial in South Africa. He joins us now via our video link in Johannesburg. Uh, Dr. Mehta, thanks very much for your time this morning on the AIM report. And you know, this was going to be my first question to you. What does this mean for South Africa, uh, the breakthrough in this COVID-19 vaccine. We are obviously a part of the Pfizer clinical trial here at home. Yeah, th thank you very much for having me on, on the program. Uh, yeah, a lot of interest uh, since the press release yesterday and lots of optimism. Um, we have been chatting with some of our colleagues that are doing some of the other vaccine studies in South Africa. And there's a generally a, a large amount of optimism about the speed in which these trials are developing results. And uh, we are looking forward to uh, having a vaccine available for use globally uh, within the next couple of months, hopefully. Wow. I mean, that's, that's an incredible statement to make after months and months of what the world has been going through. Uh, more than 1.2 million people being killed by COVID-19 related issues. So just give it to us in terms of we're talking 10 to uh, 15 to 20 million people being immunized by the end of 2020 that's according to Pfizer how many of those people will be in South Africa well, that's very very difficult to say at this stage uh, so so just bear in mind that that it is pretty early um, the the results that have been released have been the first interim results that have been uh, conducted for the study. Yep. Um, so th there is a little bit of way to go in terms of uh, getting the finalized results uh, ready and published and before the regulatory bodies approve what is called an emergency use authorization. Um, that, that is basically the precursor to, to the company uh, going ahead and manufacturing uh, the vaccine. So the interim results show that, um, that there is uh, lots of hope. It's looking very, very optimistic. Um, initially, uh, Pfizer, we're, we're looking at a result of somewhere around 65% uh, to show success with this particular vaccine. And uh, having the interim results come in at around 90%, um, you know, there's a lot to look forward to. Um, it's still early, but it's looking promising. And I think to, to keep it in perspective, uh, Pfizer is, is one of the companies that, that are going ahead and, and uh, doing the phase three clinical trials at the moment. There are a few others uh, in South Africa in particular, but globally as well. So uh, you made mention of it being a race. It, it does seem like it sometimes, uh, but uh, I think for the benefit of, of uh, the, the greater population, uh, the faster we get a, uh, a vaccine that works, the better it is for everybody. Absolutely. And I mean, this is a big, big win, Dr. Mehta, for Pfizer. You just talked about how many other clinical trials are underway by other pharmaceutical companies. Huge win for Pfizer, this one. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think, I think uh, you know, to put it into perspective again, um, the, the molecules are slightly different. Mm. Um, the, the data that is coming out do follow similar uh, patterns in terms of what the companies are looking for. I think uh, in, in terms of uh, the speed at which uh, the results have come out uh, just shows how well the company has uh, conducted the studies globally. Uh, for us in South Africa, we, we had come on board a little bit late. We were not, not involved from the start. Um, and I think uh, the company does play a lot of, uh, place a lot of emphasis on current trends with COVID infections in the geographical area that they choose to go with. Um, so there was a little bit of, of um, 
what can I say, uh, just, just trying to investigate where we are in the country and what's happening with our infections before they gave us the go-ahead to start. Mm. Um, our initial numbers in South Africa uh, was looking for 800 patients uh, across four sites. So these sites are Newtown Clinical Research here in Johannesburg, and then we have sites in Western Cape, uh, in Pretoria, and in uh, Limpopo province as well. And all of these sites started around the end of September, and uh, everything has been progressing really, really well. The, the study teams have been working extremely hard. The local Pfizer offices, the companies that are involved with monitoring these clinical trials have been working extremely hard just to make sure that our, our timelines are met. And fortunately for us in South Africa, we actually recruited all of our targeted numbers of patients in, in, in a speed which, you know, we, we got our targets like a few days before we were supposed to. So, so that, that just bears testimony to uh, the performance of the clinical trial sites in South Africa, the doctors that are involved in the research and the patients and the staff that are being involved mm, here. Yeah. yeah, Dr. Mita, in terms of um, the issues around long-term safety and efficacy of the vaccine, uh, also questions around how long the vaccine would provide protection. How much more research does that take to, to clarify? Yeah, you know, generally when, when you talk about clinical trials, you sometimes uh, will follow a product for, for a couple of years. Yeah. Even after a product has been approved for marketing, there's still some post-marketing research that takes place for continued evaluation of the safety of the product. With this particular uh, trial, there were two aspects to it. So the first aspect was to look at whether the product is actually safe. And uh, fortunately, there have been uh, no serious side effects globally that have been reported uh, with this product. Um, so so that's, that's the one objective that has been uh, reached, not fully, uh, not, not conclusively at the moment, but, but the data is looking great. Um, so the, the, the earlier safety data that, that you would expect to come out would be towards the end of November. Um, so that, that's in terms of safety. And then there will be ongoing safety data that will be collected for a period of about uh, 20, 22 months around there. So there is a long way to go still in, in, in confirming the, the early safety data. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is, uh, and, and I think you alluded to that now, was how long uh, the, the, in, the immune process would, would last and provide uh, protection against the vaccine, uh, against the virus. And, and that is something that we are continually looking at as well. So part of this clinical trial is looking at uh, the, the development of COVID infections later on. Um, so you're looking like a year down the line, we're looking at uh, antibody levels in the body as well. Um, so that's looked at. And with something like this, because it's such a new infection, new therapy that's involved, it's something that we need to continually do uh, for the next probably year and a half before we can conclusively say how long the protection would yeah. last. Yeah, as you say, a lot of the research that's been expedited now takes place normally over a number of years. Uh, Dr. Mita, I, I've, I've probably asked you this question before, but I want to just ask you again in terms of, because I mean, this is the news we've been waiting for, isn't it? The fact that we are well on our way to now getting a vaccine for COVID-19. I'm told Pfizer uh, expects to manufacture around 50 million doses of the vaccine this year and then 1.3 billion doses in 2021. Again, when those uh, doses of the vaccine are manufactured, where do they go? Who decides how they are divvied up? Yeah, I, I think that that might be a, a very interesting question to pose to, to the corporate guys at Pfizer. Um, I, I do understand that there has been lots of interest uh, where, where countries are actually getting in touch with these pharmaceutical companies and almost booking a certain amount of vaccines uh, once they are ready for production. Uh, my last engagement with, with uh, our local team at Pfizer showed that South Africa had not yet committed to, to, uh, to keeping aside a certain amount of, of these vaccines. But I'm certain that this is something that our, our Department of Health will be looking at yeah. in the next couple of weeks. I mean, just from the work that you are surely involved in, Dr. Mita, is it a case of the highest bidder? No, I, 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 the, the sense that I'm getting from, from, from the work that we are doing is that it will be a, a uh, vaccine that would be um, 
available to the great population. Um, the sense that I'm getting is that this will not be a bidding war, mm -hmm. but I think it will be a matter of expressing interest in procuring the vaccine. Um, and, and that would then tie in with the manufacturing processes that the company mm. has. Yeah. Dr. Uh, Isak Mehta, thanks very much for your time this morning on the AM report. Great to talk to you. And of course, it is one of the big stories uh, coming to us. Uh, BioNTech and Pfizer announcing a breakthrough in their COVID-19 vaccine, revealing yesterday that the vaccine uh, that they've been researching has demonstrated evidence of an efficacy uh, rate above 90 percent against the coronavirus. Certainly that story around how the vaccine will be divvied up around the world. The company expecting to manufacture 50 million doses this year and then 1.3 billion doses in 2021. But who decides where those vaccines go? I'm sure we'll get some clarity on that throughout the coming days.